Hello everyone and welcome back to another new album video. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers. Uh, first released June 18th, 2020. Some notable tracks on this album are Kyoto, Garden Song, Savior Complex, and I Know the End. Got some quick notes here about the album and then we'll just discuss the album. I've listened to it a couple times uh, so far. And I overall, I really enjoy it. I think it's a really good, it's kind of like uh, alternative folk, a little bit of indie. Like, I don't like using indie as a, like a, a genre. I don't think indie is a genre or like a descriptor, but um, it fits that kind of vibe. So let me uh, pull up my notes here. There we are. So like we said earlier, uh, first released June 18th, 2020. This is her second studio album following a follow-up album to Stranger in the Alps. And when I, when I was going through the discography and I saw the title of that, I'm like, it would be really weird if that was not a reference to the, the Big Lebowski. So in The Big Lebowski, there's a scene where John Goodman's character um, starts smashing up a car, and I can't say it on here, but the um, TV version of that scene is, this is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. I thought that was really funny because I saw the title of it, and I'm like, there's no way that's just a like a coincidence. That's what it's called. So, but yeah, it was based on that. But uh, Punisher is the follow-up to that album. I probably will go through and listen to that album at some point, just based on how much I've enjoyed Punisher. Um, so the reason I ended up kind of um, diving into Phoebe Bridger's music was because of uh, Boy Genius. So Boy Genius put out the record. Uh, last year, it was nominated for um, Album of the Year at the recent Grammy Awards. And um, I went through all of those, um, I think it was like eight albums, like the eight Album of the Year nominees. And I listened to all of those albums just to kind of uh, be caught up and be like, kind of like, I, I don't want to say informed, but just listened to all of the uh, nominees. I really, like I said, I really like the record by Boy Genius which is a super group um, with Julian Baker, Lucy Dacus, and Phoebe Bridgers. So I wanted to start looking at some of their individual work um, outside of Boy Genius. I think Boy Genius has only done like one, I think the record is their only album. Um, and then they announced kind of like right before the Grammys that they were kind of pretty much, at least for now, um, done making music at least together, hopefully temporarily, because I really liked what they kind of do as a unit uh, what they do individually. Um, I haven't listened to all of the discographies for all of these um, members individually. I've listened to, again, listened to Punisher. I listened to one of Lucy's records and one of Julian's records. Um, and they each have like very different kind of like voice ranges. So it's really interesting what happens when they kind of like get together. I think Lucy sings a little, like I'm not really sure what register it is or like what, um, like, note style or I don't really know like what kind of like vocal I guess vocal range what vocal range they're using uh, but I did notice that though that Phoebe and Julian's like they sing a little like a little bit softer Lucy sings a little bit louder but uh, when they get together with that it's, it creates a really cool kind of dynamic so went through listened to Punisher and um, I'm probably going to again listen to her listen to Stranger in the Alps and then with Lucy and Julian's records I'll probably get to listening to those as well um this was supposed to be like a one one a week new album, and I ended up I started logging it, and I've actually listened to a lot more new out new music than I initially planned on. Uh, some of it's old, but I've listened to like all like I think it's like 110 records already this year. Um, and of course, I'm not recounting repeated listenings. Like I've listened to this twice. I uh, listened to like a couple of Foo Fighters albums multiple times, but. Um, I'll probably do like a different video at the end of the year, kind of breaking down everything that I listened to, not just for this series, but for the, the entire year. But came to this because of uh, Boy Genius. Um, it took about a year and a half to record. They all recorded it, but it was recorded at uh, Sound City in uh, Los Angeles. Um, don't think I've ever been to Sound City. I think I've been close because I think when I went to Studio 606, it's the original Sound City is somewhat near there. Um, so maybe next time I go to LA, I'll probably try to at least go to where South City is. You probably can't get inside of it, but it'd be cool to see where it is. Um, some of these songs apparently predated some of the songs that were on Stranger in the Alps because she was writing them while touring uh, for like other other music. 
So a lot of the albums were kind of just like written over just like the course of however long she was um, was touring for. Um, in the liner notes for the album, apparently her dog named Max, who's a pug, had passed away right before the, like I think in like 2019 or something, it had that dog for like, I think the dog was like 16. So she said in an interview that kind of like the feelings and emotions coming from that dog's passing kind of worked their way into this album in various ways. Uh, we got that. It's somewhat a dark album. Like the like the themes of it are dark. Um, I think people like I remember reading somewhere that it's probably um, like I think like Stranger in the Alps is more based on trauma, and this is based on more processing it or trying to move past some of these traumas that she's had. So um, I'm going to have to go back and listen to Stranger in the Alps, Stranger in the Alps, and compare them. But it's it's a somewhat dark album, like at least like lyrically. Um, Garden Song, I, I, I have heard this song off of it because I was listening to some other record and Apple Music has this thing where once you finish an album, it'll start playing not necessarily random songs, but songs from artists that are similar to the album you just listened to. So I listened to some other album, I forget exactly what it was, but um, Smoke Signals from Stranger in the Alps came up and I heard that not too long ago. But Garden Song, which is track two on this album, uh, Phoebe Bridgers has said this is kind of that Garden Song is somewhat a sequel to that song. And then you have um, Kyoto, probably my favorite track track on the album. It's very, like, upbeat, even though the lyrics are fairly, fairly dark. There's talk about, you know, like, uh, calling her father, calling from a payphone to tell her that he's getting sober, about missing, like, her brother's birthday, and um, things like that. So, like, the... Lyrical content of the song is somewhat dark, but it's an up-tempo, somewhat upbeat song. It's got a really cool music video. I'll probably throw the music video in the description to where you can check it out, because she's got the skeleton costume or skeleton shirt that you can see you kind of see it in the album cover over there. But uh, she's known to be performed, it performing, doing shows in this kind of skeleton costume or skeleton shirt, whatever you want to call it. Um, came up to very critic became very critically acclaimed. I'm going to pull some reviews up here or just like some scores and then we'll go through the track list. But uh, let me pull up some reviews here. And it basically got widespread acclaim. So like when we look at like places like All Music gives it a four and a half out of five. AV Club gave it an A minus. Consequence of Sound gave it an A minus as well. Uh, Daily Telegraph gives it a five out of five. The Independent gave it a four out of five. Um, the line of best fit, I'm not sure what that is, but that gives it, looks like an, um, an 8 out of 10. NME gave it 5 out of 5. Pitchfork gives it an 8.7. Um, Slant Magazine gave it a 4 out of 5. And Rolling Stone also gave it a 4 out of 5. So overall, a like very well-received uh, album, at least critically. Uh, I don't really know how it did commercially, but I, I would definitely, if I see this on vinyl somewhere... I would be very interested in picking it up because I think it's a, just an excellent record. And this is the first record that I've actually listened to from Phoebe Bridger. So this whole series, this year series at least, is all about exploring uh, new music mostly. Or at least new music to me specifically where I might know a track or two off an album but I've never listened to the whole album. Or it might be, in this, like in this case, a completely new artist or new outside of Boy Genius I should say. Um, and an album that I had not heard before, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's an excellent album. And we're going to move into our track list now. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Let's see if I can just pull up the track listing. There we go. So it's 11 tracks, uh, 40 minutes in length. Uh, track one is called DVD Menu. It's just kind of like a... It's mostly an instrumental, and it's kind of like the background music you might get, like just like the title says, DVD menu. Uh, when you put a DVD in and you just let it loop, and it has kind of like some maybe background music or background, like there's like some slight vocalization to it. But uh, yeah, track one is DVD menu. Uh, track two is Garden Song. That's an excellent song there. Uh, then following that is track three, which is Kyoto. Probably, like I said earlier, probably my favorite uh, track on the album. I find myself constantly going back to that song specifically um, on this album. Uh, track four is the title track, which is Punisher. Uh, track five is Halloween. Track six is Chinese Satellite. Uh, track seven is Moon. Uh, sorry. Track seven is Moon Song. Track eight is Savior Complex. 
Uh, track 9 is ICU. Uh, track 10 is Graceland 2. Uh, T-O-O, not the number. Or T-O. And um, track 11 is I Know the End. Um, and it's really interesting because uh, both Julia Baker and Lucy Dawkins show up on a couple of these tracks. Um, mostly doing, uh, I think, backing vocals on tracks 10 and 11. So track 10 is Graceland 2. And track 11 is I Know the End. There's a lot of uh, guest kind of musicians uh, showing up doing like various like instruments and things like that. So it's there's def definitely like a huge kind of collaborative process putting this album out. And it's definitely one of my favorite albums um, so far this year that I've listened to that's been completely new. Um, I might do like a like a best of like list, even though they, this album didn't come out this year. It might be like maybe like top 10 albums from this series or just the top 10 albums that I've listened to this year that are, that are new or something like that. I'm not really sure, but I definitely am going to continue to listen to this album um, just because I think it's just excellent. Um, like I said, I basically came to it because I had listened to all of the record or yeah, record of the year, album of the year, I should say, uh, nominees from this most recent Grammys. There was eight of them. I listened to all of them. I, like I said, really liked the record by Boy Genius and then started kind of diving into the individual discographies of the members of Boy Genius. So I potentially might do, uh, but maybe in a future episode for this series, I might do the record by Boy Genius just because I think it was a, a very good um, jumping, on, jumping on point for all of the individual members. But um, like I said, I'll link in the description to, from, from the Kyoto, Kyoto music video. Um, it's an excellent music video, excellent song. Again, favorite song on the album, and this album definitely one of my favorites this year. But uh, that's going to do it for now. We'll be back again next week with a completely new album. Um, until then, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Take care and have a good one. See ya.